we discussed about the closer set of attributes. In this video, we'll discuss about the closer set of functional dependencies. So it is closer set of functional dependencies. Okay. Now, what is this closer set of functional dependencies? You can say if there are some functional dependencies which are already given. Now, from those functional dependencies, if if you can find other functional dependencies which are also valid, then it is called as closer set of functional dependencies. Okay. So you can write it down like this. It is the set of the set of all functional dependencies that can be that can be determined by determined by using the given set of functional dependencies the given set of functional dependencies assume they are f right and it is denoted by and it is denoted by f plus or you can say f closure okay so there's a difference between the fun uh, no a closure set of functional dependencies and closure set of attributes in the previous video we discussed about the closer set of attributes so here in this video we are discussing about the closest set of functional dependencies assuming that we have the relation r a comma b comma c this is the relation which is given and this is the set of functional dependencies which are given and uh, these functional dependencies are like this a determines b and b determines c so using these functional dependencies what are the new functional dependencies you can find out they are called as closer set and if this is denoted by f then this closer set will be denoted by f plus and they can be anything for example here a can determine b b can determine c a can determine c ac can determine bc right ab can determine bc and so on so there are so many functional dependencies you can find out and all those extra functional dependencies are called as called as the set of functional dependencies so let us see assuming that uh, uh, this is a question it is find the number of find the number of functional dependencies in uh, f closure in f closure which is determined by f plus for a relation for a relation with two attributes two attributes okay find the number of functional dependencies for a relation with two attributes you can see assuming that we have a relation r a comma b that means these are the two attributes first of all take what are the possible subsets of this a and b right so we are going to find the functional de dependencies between x determines y when x can be a subset of a comma b and y can also be a subset of a comma b so how many subsets are possible they are phi a b and ab so phi is a subset of phi is, uh, is a subset of a comma b phi is a subset of this set which is containing a comma b a is a subset of the set which is containing a comma b and so on so there are uh, these are the you know four subsets you can have now here in this case for y also write all the subsets which are possible so when we are trying to find the number of functional dependencies that means we can have you know, every functional dependency from this set to this set right so for for example if this set is containing four attributes and this sorry uh, four uh, values and this set is having four values so in total we will be having 4 into 4 that is 16 functional dependencies 16 functional dependencies so what can be the formula here for example if a relation is given r and assuming that the cardinality of r is n that means there are n attributes then first of all you have to you try to find the power set of n uh, power set of r and that power set will be containing 2 raised to power n attributes for example here there are two so there are 2 raised to power 2 that means there are four subsets of this and the y will also be having 2 to the power 2 2 to the power n so there is 2 to the power n multiplied by 2 to the power n that means 2 to the power 2n 2 to the power 2n these many different functional dependencies are possible for example here you can see phi can determine phi you can take a functional dependency like this phi can determine a phi can determine b phi can determine a comma b in the same way a can determine phi a can determine a a can determine b a can determine ab b can determine phi b can determine b 
B can determine A, B can determine AB, AB can determine phi, AB can determine A, AB can determine B, and AB can determine AB. So these are the possible functional dependencies uh, which can have if we have a relation with two attributes, right? That means F plus is containing only uh, 16 values. Okay. Now coming back to the previous question here we were having the original given functional dependencies are a determines b and b determines c that means these are the functional dependencies which are already given which are already given now when i'm saying f closure or f closure means uh, if we are trying to find what are the additional functional dependencies which holds additional functional dependencies which hold that means we have to take the closer set of uh, this attribute and we have to find what are the functional dependencies which are actually valid for this what are the functional dependencies which are valid for example if we have uh, three attributes then how many different functional dependencies are possible if this is for x determines y first of all try to find what are what are what is the uh, cardinality of the power set of this so cardinality of the power set will be uh, 2 raised to power 3 that is we are having eight subset of this so what are those subsets they are phi a b c a b b c a c and a b c these are the subsets of this in the same way why will be having phi a b c a b b c a c and a b c that means 8 into 8 you can see there are total 64 uh, different functional dependencies are possible out of these 64 functional dependencies we have to see how many functional dependencies are valid how many functional dependencies are valid to find how many functional dependencies are valid we are going to take the help of these given functional dependencies these given functional dependencies right so you can see uh, with the help of these given functional dependencies you can find so many new functional dependencies that that will also be valid and that is called as the you know, finding what is the additional functional dependencies you can have okay so let us do one thing let us take an example of uh, this because this, this example will become very huge very large so there's one more way of finding the additional functional dependencies is that you take these attributes and you try to find the closure for example if i try to find the closure of a then it will become b and c that is a b c that means a can determine a a can determine b a can determine c a can determine a b a can determine a b c a can determine a c a can determine a b c a can determine phi right like this so if you just take this one then on this side we are having three attributes so therefore 2 raised to power 3 and key that means eight different functional dependencies are possible from this in the same way if you do b closure that means we'll be getting b c here there are two attributes that means uh, 2 raised to power 2 or you can say four different functional dependencies are possible from this if i take a b closure then from this a b closure you can see we can get a b c or in this side we are having three attributes that means eight different functional dependencies are possible for, from this okay in the same way if you take a b c closure that means you can see that a b c we will get and there are three attributes therefore we get eight different functional dependencies which are possible for this in the same way like this phi can determine everything or uh, a can determine phi b can determine phi c can determine phi so in total we have total 64 functional dependencies which are possible but out of these 64 functional dependencies we have to find which of the functional dependencies is not possible for example if I say C can determine A, C can determine A even though it it exists in the additional functional dependency but this functional dependency is not valid in this case because if you take C closure then you will get only C, we will not be able to get A that is why C determines A is not a valid functional dependency. Okay in the same way if I say uh, AC determines B, now this is a valid functional dependency because just with the help of A you can determine B. So even if I had C, that doesn't create any difference, right? So because if I take AC closure, then I can find A, B, and C, and because there is a B here, so we can say AC determines B is a valid functional dependency. Okay, so we have to find what are the, the functional dependencies which are valid, and what are the functional dependencies which are not valid. That is called as finding additional functional dependencies from the given set of functional dependencies. Okay.